Welcome to the Writing in Your Jammies podcast. I'm your host, Jeannie Hall, and I'm pursuing my dreams by helping you make your dreams a reality. I'm an author, blogger, podcaster, and life coach who hopes to inspire you to feel better, live happier, and go after your dreams with a vengeance. You can do it. Join me. Hello. And welcome to the Writing in Your Jammies podcast. This is podcast 12, Thoughts. So this podcast is going to be all about our thoughts, our thought processes, and what our thoughts do to our overall sense of happiness and well-being. So I've been, as you know, if you listen to my last podcast, I have discovered a new mentor in a lady and life coach. She's a master certified life coach by the name of Brooke Castillo. And she has a special model that she has used for years to help her clients and coach her clients, which she has a lot of clients who are actually life coaches themselves. And she trains a lot of life coaches and certifies a lot of life coaches through her life coaching school. And her model is one of those beautiful things that she's developed after studying all these great people um, like Tony Robbins and Abraham and Eckhart Tolle and all these, you know, basically famous personal development folks. And so she developed a model to help her basically define her coaching and distill it down so that she could not only coach others herself, but teach other coaches how to help their clients. So she breaks it down like this. She writes down five letters going down a a piece of paper. And the first one is C for circumstances. And then she does T for thoughts, F for feelings, A for actions, and R for results. And the first one, the circumstances, those are the things in the world that we can't change. So like politics, we can't change that. Other people, we can't change. We might think we might be able to change them, but we can't. There are other people, we don't have any control over them, or at least not permanent change over them. Um, So those are basically facts out in the world. The sky is blue. That's a circumstance. We can't change it. Okay. Then we have our thoughts. Our thoughts are so important because they dictate the way that we behave in our life. So like if we think that because we grew up poor, our parents have been poor, we come from generations of poor people, and therefore we'll never have money. If that's our thought, then we will make that a self-fulfilling prophecy that we will make that a real reality for ourselves. And so that's why it's really important to be careful what you're thinking and to think more deliberately about what you're thinking because you can then change that thought and change your reality. So even if you have had a family that's been poor for generations and you've always been poor yourself, you can change your thought and totally change your finances and all, all the different situations in your life that you're unhappy with, you can change just by starting out with that thought. But it is a process. It's a little bit more to it than that. And I'm going to talk about that today. Your thoughts, so basically our circumstances give us a a sentence in our head or a thought. And then our thought, whatever we're telling ourselves, then brings about a feeling. So if you feel like you're always going to be poor, you know, if that, if your thought is that I'm always going to be poor because everybody in my family's always been poor, then that gives you a feeling in your body. There's a sensation in your body that makes you feel crappy or whatever the sensation is. And you can actually, if you pay attention, feel what that emotion is doing inside of your body. Do you feel like, do you feel a pit in your stomach? Do you feel soreness in your throat? Do you feel tightness across your shoulder blades? Is your neck sore? You know, all those types of sensations. You know, are you clenching your fists? What What's going on in your body that is showing how you feel, how those sensations are manifesting in your body? So your thoughts cause your feelings and then your feelings make you act a certain way, cause your actions, or they may make you do nothing. 
Maybe it's so overwhelming that you take no action because you're too scared to do anything. Maybe you just hide. So just depending on what the circumstances are. So let's talk about the person who's poor again and they think they've always been poor and so they're always going to be poor and that makes them feel really awful. So they feel demoralized, they feel sad, okay? And their action may be to just feel sad about their life and maybe they do something about it or maybe they don't. Most likely they're going to feel trapped and they may, may feel like whatever they do won't make any difference. So in that situation, they may not being do, they may not do anything at all. They may just feel so trapped. They feel like they can't do anything. So their action maybe is nothing. They just keep doing what they've been doing, which hasn't been working. And then they end up with the result, which is still being poor. Okay. So your self talk, the way you talk to yourself, is so so important and a lot of us go around our, our whole lives talking to ourselves in a certain way and we don't even realize how negatively we we talk to each to ourselves a lot of us talk to ourselves like you stupid idiot what are you thinking you'll never be able to do that why are you thinking that you're just such an idiot what's wrong with you you know a lot of us go through all day every day beating up ourselves and feeling ashamed of ourselves and a lot of that comes from the way we talk to ourselves. A lot of us talk to ourselves like we would never talk to anybody else. We would never talk to anybody, like a friend or someone we care about or someone we love. We would never say something like that to, uh, to them. But the way we talk to ourselves, whew, it's like self-hatred. It's really scary how some people talk to themselves. And I think even those of us who don't think we hate ourselves, even people like I don't think I hate myself but I used to say some really nasty things to myself and it led to some really nasty results manifesting so when you realize that you do have control don't let that scare you let that empower you to then change that talk and start to change your talk to something more positive and loving and gentle Okay, because you're worth it. You're not worth being, you know, put down. You wouldn't let someone else put you down, hopefully, and certainly don't do it to yourself. So be aware of the things that you say to yourself in those moments, especially in negative situations. And what do you believe? So let's say we're talking about the person who is who is poor. Why did they believe that they are that they were poor? to begin with. Maybe they're poor right then, but why haven't they ever changed that? What do they believe? In that first example, they believed that because their family had always has always been poor, they come from generations of poor people, that they would always be poor. But the truth of the matter is, lots of billionaires and millionaires have come from basically nothing. They've come from, you know, poor immigrants that came over on a boat and, you know, tried not to starve to death in the new country. That's <laughs> a lot of people come from that kind of background and are blue collar, barely making it, barely keeping their heads above water financially and that kind of thing. And yet they turned into multimillionaires themselves even though that was their family so what your past is and what your family is and all that kind of stuff has no real bearing on what your future can be it can be something totally different if you want it to be so what you need to do to start this process let's say you have those negative thoughts in your head you're working on your self-talk so you don't put yourself down all the time but really look at what you believe about yourself do you really think you're a bad person? Because if you do, you want to start turning that around because you're not. I promise you, you're not. No matter what you've done, no matter what you've thought in the past, no matter how horrible you, you know, may have put yourself down or whatever, forgiveness is a very important tool in this process. So forgive yourself for whatever you've done if you feel like you need to apologize to someone else for what you've done, that's fine too. It's good and healthy. But just you need to let it go and forgive yourself and take a step forward out of that. And start believing some more positive things, even if it's just a, a mild change. You can take baby steps. So maybe one thing, one exercise that I did several months ago was... Um, 
I read this thing where I said, look at yourself. Can you look yourself in the mirror, look yourself right in the eye and say, I love you and say your name. So could I go into the mirror and say, I love you, Jeannie. And the first time I did that, it just felt weird, felt awkward. It just felt, I'm not going to say completely wrong, but it felt very odd. And if I, it made me, you know, kind of pull back and not want to do it. And so what I learned was that I needed to work on my self-love because if I didn't love myself, nobody else is going, you know, I can't depend on anybody else to love me if I can't love myself. So I started really, really trying to do that every day. I would go to the mirror and try and just stare in it and say, I love you, Jeannie. So if you've never done that exercise, I dare you to try it because it's a very eye-opening experience. If you can do that, awesome. And if it feels good and then you can smile at yourself and hug yourself, and yes, awesome, this is good. That's a really great positive step. If you do that and you feel very awkward or it feels wrong to you or it almost feels upsetting, maybe it brings tears to your eyes, you've got some, some work to do on loving yourself. But those are very important first steps. If you want to have a happy, successful life, the first thing you have to do is love yourself and turn your thoughts into self-love, first of all. So baby step it. Start with that and then move forward. So what you want to do is make whatever sentence that's popping up in your head into something that's both positive and believable. So let's say the poor person that we were talking about before. Let's say they said, I'm poor. I'm always going to be poor. Okay, miss. Let's say that's their sentence. If that person was then to say, I'm going to make a million dollars this year. Now, is that positive? Oh, yeah, definitely. Very positive. Very good and positive. That's great. And some people try and do that. And sometimes people took like when they either read or watched the secret movie, a lot of people try to just turn it on its head like that. And it's great if you can do that. But most of us, we don't believe that. We can say I'm a millionaire all day, every day. It doesn't change our our bank account one penny because we don't actually believe what we're saying. If you're lying to yourself, it's not gonna help. So what you wanna do is change that sentence into something that's both positive and believable. So what that person might do, instead of going from, I'm poor, I'll always be poor, to I'm a millionaire, which isn't going to ring true at all, maybe they might want to change that to, instead of I'm poor and I'll always be poor, it's like, I won't always be poor. Now, is that a dramatic change? No, but it is a positive change. It's a step in the right direction. Maybe they could say something like, I can earn more money. Again, it's not a huge step, but it's a believable one. And by baby stepping your way into something that's both positive and believable, your feelings will then change in a good way. If it feels like a lie, then your body's going to feel like it's a lie and you're going to react like it's a lie and your results are not going to be anything because you don't believe it. But if you can think something that's positive and believable, whatever that is for you, and then take the step and then it feels good in your body. It feels right. Okay, good, good. You're going forward. Then you can go into the action that you want to take, that you're inspired to take at that point. So if you're feeling better about money, maybe you get an idea of, you know how I could make a little bit more money is by doing this, whatever that idea is. Maybe it's applying for another job. Maybe it's doing something creative and selling it. It could be anything, whatever that might be. You know what I could do? I could have a garage sale and get rid of all that junk that's cluttering up my house anyway. And then I could have the money to go take that course I've always wanted to take and get some schooling. And then I could take that degree and, you know, again, baby steps, stepping stones, go forward. It doesn't have to be a giant leap off of a, you know, <laughs> tall building, it, you know, because that's going to scare you to death. What you want to do is take little steps that are a little bit out of your comfort zone, but not so shocking to your system that you're just going to turn around and stop and quit and just not want to do anything. Because that's what a lot of people do. They try and do these huge lofty goals that really feel impossible. And when they fail the first time, they go, oh, I can't do this. Forget it. And they'll stop. 
and you know so you don't want to do that you want to do baby steps that you can believe and go forward and and do so let's try another example let's say your sentence in your head is my business isn't doing as well as I want okay that's your thought what are the circumstances Okay, how can we change that thought and make it positive? So let's say your circumstances are that you've started this business, but you have you don't really have very many network connections. So you don't really have very many people to sell it to. Maybe you haven't advertised at all. Maybe you've just kind of done something. Maybe you're a writer and you've written a book and then you self-publish it and you put it on Amazon or whatever, or put it on whatever site you're gonna put it on, but then you don't advertise it at all, so you don't sell hardly any copies. Again, you see the circumstances. The fact is, even though you wrote the book and put it out there, nobody knows about it. And so, what can we do to change that? How can we change, my business isn't doing as well as I want, into something that would make it positive? So maybe you'd say, my business is doing great. That is positive, but is it too far-fetched? You know, maybe it's not really doing great and it feels like a lie. Maybe you have no clients or customers and only $40 in the bank right now. So we need to make it positive and believable, just like the other example. So let's say you change your sentence from, my business isn't doing as well as I want, to, I believe I can make money with my business. There you go. That's better. That's positive and more believable. Or maybe you can come up with an amount. I believe I can sell X number of products. Whatever is believable to you. Maybe if you're a writer and you've got books out and that's your product, you can say, I believe I can sell at least 10 books or at least 20 books or at least 50 books or at least 100 books. Whatever is realistic to you. I believe I can draw attention to my books. And then you'll get the idea for what would do that. Let's do another example. Here's your thought. Your mind's telling you that you'll never find the significant other of your dreams. So this is more of a romantic relationship type issue. What are your circumstances? Your circumstances, which are the, just the facts that are not changeable, are that you're not in a relationship right now. Okay, that's a fact. The problem is how you feel about it, because there's lots of people that aren't in relationships and are perfectly happy. So not everybody who's single is unhappy. But let's say you are. You're single and you're unhappy. So how can you change that? Think about how you feel. Do you feel crappy? Lonely? Sad? Depressed? Which feels the most true to you? Come up with the word that feels the most true to you. And then we're going to figure out how we can change it. What actions have you been taking because of the way you feel? Are you dating anyone who will ask you out, even if you know right off the bat that it's not a good fit? If you're doing that, what result will that bring you? It'll probably put you in a relationship that either ends quickly because you're not a good fit, or leaves you unhappy. And maybe you'll stay in it, but you're unhappy because you're afraid to be alone. Not the best result. So how can you change your feelings of loneliness? How can you change your thought? How about instead of saying, I'll never find the significant other of my dreams, let's say you say, I am worthy of true love because you are. Or maybe you can say, I believe it's possible to find my soulmate. Now maybe you don't, maybe you can't say something as obvious as, I'm going to find my soulmate tomorrow. Maybe that would feel like a lie. But you could say, I believe it is possible to find my soulmate. I believe my soulmate is out there. And that's positive and believable. And then as you need to, you'll make more baby steps. I believe I'm going to find my soulmate soon and change it to that. Let's try another example. Maybe you're a writer and you're having trouble finishing your novel. So what is your thought? Your thought might be, I can't figure out a good ending. So maybe you've written most of it, but now you've gotten to the end and you can't figure out the ending. Your circumstances may be you're working a day job or taking care of your kids all day. 
Maybe you're giving all your energy to something else and you have no creative energy left over to design an ending you'll actually be happy with. So let's say that's the circumstance. You're just really tired because you're too busy doing other things. So maybe your feeling is that you're tired and exhausted. So your action that you could then take would be to take better care of yourself. Maybe you can get a babysitter if it's kids or take some time off if it's your job. Change your thought. So let's see, so you take better care of yourself and then you change your thought to I can figure out this ending. So before it was you couldn't figure out your ending. Now you can feel, figure it out. Thinking that you can figure it out is going to change the way you feel about your novel. So you'll feel better, which will make you more inspired to write. And then once you write more, you'll probably be able to come up with the result you want, which is a completed novel that you're happy with. Okay, so today I've talked about thoughts and modeling. And I want to share a, a new program that I am now offering as a life coach. It's a six part series and I'll have it on my website. So the program I'm targeting is for aspiring or published authors. And maybe you're a mom taking care of a family member. Um, maybe you're taking care of kids or maybe you're taking care of elderly family who needs to be taken care of. And you're having trouble completing your writing projects and you're blaming it on, on those outside factors like caregiving, family, maybe you work a day job and it's taking a lot of your time and energy. So I am focusing my life coach program on that particular group of people which are writers trying to finish projects and they're having trouble completing them. So if that is you and that sounds like something you might be interested in, then I'd love for you to go to writinginyourjammies.com check out my coaching page and see if that might be of interest to you. So I hope that this podcast was helpful and I hope that you have a wonderful day. Thanks so much for listening. Bye-bye. I truly appreciate you taking time out of your day to listen to this show. You can learn more about the topics discussed on this episode and sign up for my positivity newsletter at my website, writinginyourjammies.com. You can also check out all my books on my Amazon author page, keyword Jeannie Hall. Remember that you are worthy of all good things. You are beautiful, amazing, and made of love and light. Thanks again.